start recording. Full screen. Okay, so uh, this is the PyScript Fun meeting, which happens every fortnight, every two weeks. Um, and the only purpose of the PyScript Fun meeting is to have fun with PyScript. Uh, and it's the place where you sidle up and you go, hey, I've built a cool thing. I want to demo it. Uh, do you want to have a look? And then you give us five or ten minutes of your time as you show us this thing. And we all go, ooh, that's cool. And we ask you questions and then we move on to the next person. And that's it, really. Um, so, do we have... Uh, and uh, perhaps uh, with your cameras on, reveal uh, whether you have your hand in the air. Uh, do we have anybody who would like to demo anything? Okay, so we have one, uh, four. Wow, we are going to be very, very. Um, uh, we're going to be very uh, busy. Um, so uh, I saw myself, Piet, Andrea, and Fabio. Is that right? Yeah, okay. I can't remember who put their hand up first. Um, I know mine's a short one, so if you don't mind... Um, I'll, I'll go last if you don't mind. I'll, I'll demo mine. Yeah, okay. And then P.S., do you want to go second? And Andrea, third, and so on and so forth. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to try and do is share my screen. Um, share screen, screen, entire screen. Uh, I want uh, better text readability. Go live. Okay, you should probably all see yourselves. Uh, but what I want to do is take you to here. Everybody see my Firefox browser? Yeah? I can't see if you've got your fingers in the air or not. Uh, is that a yes? Somebody say yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Great stuff. Okay, so... Um, Recently, for mysterious reasons that some of you may know about, I've uh, had the uh, pleasure of talking with a friend of mine called Holger Krekel. Uh, if you've ever used PyTest, it's Holger you can blame for that. Uh, but Holger uh, has been helping with various things. And he was showing me a project uh, for which he got some grant support for. And it's a project called WebXDC. And it's a way of, as you can see, um, sharing apps via chat applications and the chat application that he's building is something called Delta Chat and he um, he sent me over to the developer docs okay um, which are very very uh, simple uh, to read because there's there's not really a lot going on um, and the get started uh, page tells you pretty much everything you need to use uh, but essentially what you do is you have this web WebXDC JavaScript um, file that you have locally and uh, it attaches itself to the window and then you can send updates and you can set up a listener as well. And uh, Holger, because he's a Python Easter and he knows I'm working on uh, PyScript, said, why don't you try building an app using PyScript uh, and WebXDC? So that's what I thought I would do. So um, now, I kind of lied earlier on where I said this is a PyScript fun meeting and this is where you have fun uh, because this is a not fun <laughs> demo. Um, so what I've done is I took the uh, pirate um, app that we have as the demo here. Okay. And uh, as you can see, I'm using Pyodide and I'm using the latest version of uh, PyScript. And essentially what you do is you uh, it allows you to talk like a pirate, really. Uh, and um, as um, as the hello uh, example app shows, um, you know, you need a manifest, you need the webxdc.js file in there, your HTML, we want our main.py because we're using PyScript, and an icon as well. And uh, if we look in main.py, uh, you'll see um, I actually just copied a whole bunch of stuff through. Uh, this line uh, will... <laughs> 
let you know what some of the upcoming pain is going to be. Uh, but anyway, let's scroll past down here. And uh, essentially what we do is we, we translate some English, really, is all you need to know. And what I do is I've also created uh, some functions. Uh, write to output has a name and some content. So it will say, like, Fred, the name, says ahoy there, or something like that. Okay, very, very simple. And when you click the button uh, for translate, uh, it, it calls this with uh, a JavaScript event. Okay, and uh, what I do is I grab the English, uh, I translate it into piratish, um, I find out the name of this person uh, according to the uh, WebXDC protocol. Um, and then what I have to do next, which is the awful thing, because I need to send a JavaScript object to the send update message, uh, send update function here, uh, and that would be message, and it needs to look in a particular way. So we've got message, so I have to create a new message. I have a payload, which is another new uh, object, sorry, and then payload.name is name, blah, 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 and then you send it to message. Uh, why I couldn't just do a Python dictionary and then uh, under the hood, uh, PyDide or MicroPython understands, hey, I'm a Python dictionary and I'm being passed into JavaScript, so I should probably be turning, turning myself into a JavaScript object. Uh, don't know. Anyway, I had to play this little dance, which was rather, rather painful. That wasn't fun. And then, of course, what you need to do is you tell WebXDC that uh, you have a, an event handler for listening for messages. <sighs> And this is for you, Andrea. I did try it with the flag on. You'll have seen that in the um, settings, uh, the experimental flag on, and uh, it didn't seem to work. So I had to wrap it in create proxy. Uh, we could talk about that outside this call. Uh, but I'm logging the, the, the message. It's a JavaScript uh, object. Um, and then I have to do this weird dance where I'm saying it's a proxy object, so I need to get it to Python, and then I need to get the thing from the thing, otherwise, da, 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 da. and if the thing's in the thing, then I write to output, okay? So that, as well, was rather, rather painful, because actually, what I all, only what I wanted to do was uh, write to uh, output, whoops, something like message, payload name or whatever yeah okay but uh, clearly going the other way uh, we uh, we had a problem translating it back so I have to do all of this kind of like dance which feels really painful doing this sort of stuff and this sort of stuff so it's a not fun uh, pie script not fun what does it look like uh, whoops, that's my Slack, shouldn't show you that. Uh, it should look something like that, okay? Here's my, uh, um, here's my app, and if I inspect, we can see uh, in the console a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and I'm gonna add a peer. Um, oh my gosh, uh, uh, that didn't work. Oh, it worked over on Linux, never mind. But essentially what I can do is type something like, hello, translate, and I can see uh, what's coming through um, and uh, it's not fun at all, really. So uh, I'm going to go back to Discord, stop sharing, uh, stop streaming. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially it, okay? Uh, it's It was my afternoon where Holger said, oh, it should only take you 10 minutes. Whenever Holger says it should only take you 10 minutes, you just ignore him and walk away from the keyboard, okay? Um, it didn't, and the biggest thing for me was trying to figure out this JavaScript Python proxy dance um, because it doesn't work in a smooth way. And I know PyScript, right? So it should be easy for me, and it wasn't easy. Um, so that was the not fun thing. I can see, Andrea, now that I'm looking at you, uh, and I've stopped sharing my screen, I can see you've got your hand up. I'm sorry if you've had your hand up for ages and ages and ages, but Andrea, ask away. Comments, please. So the first thing is that you ask me about MicroPython, and then the demo is about Pyodide. So in Pyodide, you shouldn't need any of that. In MicroPython, maybe <laughs> that works. In Pyodide, you shouldn't need that because we we already we already have cases where we pass object literals and and, and everything else. Yeah, this is so what. Let's, 
th this is what surprised me. I started in MicroPython thinking, I know, I'm going to surprise Holger by showing how fast it is and whoo and all of this sort of stuff. And when I asked you about it, that's quite right. When I switched to Pyodide, it still didn't work. Okay. Now, I'm not quite sure why. That might be something to do with the way that this WebXDC library works under the hood or something like that. But the point is, is that I wasn't getting the objects that I was expecting, even in Pyodide. Yeah, the, the two annoying issues that you showed in the demo Mm. are both MicroPython related to me because the create proxy auto doesn't work in MicroPython. It's only for Pyodide. Mm. And the other workaround is only for Pyodide 2. It's only for MicroPython 2. So I would like to maybe try... You and I compare. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's... let's. I'll, I'll explain please, and we can... Today? Not today, please. Yeah, please. not now. Not now. Not now. Yeah, it's quite... Um, um, yeah, it feels because... like... So... Just no. close it. We have we have known issues in MicroPython. Yeah. yeah, we can keep showing those issues all over the place. Yeah, it's still a known issue. Uh, yeah, we need yeah. to fix it. Yeah, not yeah. in PyScript because we cannot. So it has the, the, the work should be done on MicroPython side because every time on MicroPython when we pass a dictionary, any library that tries to do is naming dictionary yeah. breaks. Yeah, because because there's a throw an explicit throw error in there with the name trap sorry with the in trap and so we yeah, okay so, we so probably be more loud about this because if people think right now they can just switch between pyodide yeah. and micropathon if even if they don't have packages or anything it's not quite there yet so yeah andrea this is the thing this is good this is why we have PyScript fun is so that we can encounter these things we can surface them, we can all go, yeah, absolutely, we should buy Damien a beer and a curry and a, a big hug and things like that, and he will fix it for us in the MicroPython FFI because, you know, it's fast and so on and so forth. So anyway, uh, I see Fabio with his hand up. I just want to cede the floor to Fabio. Yeah, no, echoing everything you said, um, Damien is great. We just, I think we just need to go through those things. Yeah. Uh, did you, just a quick question. Did you try to use the the setting in Pyodide where you actually return real objects um, instead of the proxy. Uh, no, I, I, honestly, I, I was time time limited. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you, honestly, just, you're looking at a hack. Because <laughs> that, that fixed a bunch of yeah, yeah, issues yeah. that I had with other stuff. But you uh, bring up a really just, interesting point, though, is that I when you say, did you try the special magic flag in Biodide when you do the thing? That to me, or to a, a regular user, is, have you tried standing on one leg, sticking your finger in your ear and whistling God save the king? And if it's on a Thursday afternoon and not raining, then it might work. It, we don't want them to have to do all of that kind of stuff. It should, for most of the time, for most of the people doing most of the things, it should just work. TM, you know, that's, yeah, that, but, and we, is, we all agree that this is where we want to get to. We all agree on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we should be First step is actually to add FAQs and things like yeah, this yeah. on our side, so we point to their docs and stuff. Yeah. The the additional step is what Andreas. Oh well, we are all starting to do, getting the the FFIs closer to each other. Yeah. Uh, with no diffs and stuff. Yeah. Plus us providing additional layers in PyScript where we can mitigate that yeah. difference and that annoyance. Yeah. I don't want to. I'm. I really want to focus on time, so I don't want yeah, to yeah. keep going. I, but it's, yeah. it's for us to just look at it. Yeah. I also want to say kudos. This is really great. Uh, this is the type of thing that we wanted to do way too early, uh, right after we launched and stuff. But we just had too much. Yeah. And that, but definitely in the direction of us adding more stuff to the project ecosphere yeah. to support uh, distributed things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah absolutely. Great it's a great work. way of messaging. Okay, Andrea. Very, 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 very quick, because I've only got half an hour left before I have to take my son to a trombone lesson, believe it or not. Yes, yes. Yeah, we already used the FFI, the, the Fabio suggestion about converting properly dictionary, not into maps, but into objects. And that's from workers. From worker, we can handle automatically a lot of stuff. But on the main, we don't get to control all the all the APIs, all the yeah. functional calls and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. This is something to, to, to consider, but the patch to do so is there, basically, and it just has to work also on MicroPython once the FFI is out. So this is also something that we should somehow 
better um, probably discuss because the, the, the worker story for this kind of things is usually way easier because we automatically use the FFI to transform stuff. But on the main, that's not the case. And yeah, I think yeah. this demo was on the main only. Yeah, yeah, it's de definitely on the main only. Um, definitely on the main only. Okay, so uh, that's me done. I've been complaining. I've been grumpy like my granddad was. Okay, I'm going to stop. This is about fun. So, Piet, do you want to, uh, the floor's yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, first time I need to. I'm sharing this, so it's taking a moment, and I'm not so sure I will be able to share the correct screen. Let's see. Okay, uh, you do not. Do you see a screen which no. is where there is written p 5 js No. No. Let's try again. Try again. It came up and then stopped. So, uh, well, okay. for me, it did. Okay. Lab doesn't have permission. Aha! Mm. Uh -huh. I have to give permission and uh, go out. And uh, okay, uh, I think I can go after. I will try to give okay. permission. Okay. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to sort your thing out? Switch it off and on again, yeah. or whatever it is you have to do to make it work. And we'll see you in five minutes. And then uh, Andrea, the floor's yours. See you in a second, Piet. Okay. Uh, thanks. Um, it's it's gonna be quick as well, so I surely I need to share my screen first. Um, let's hope I won't have issues. <laughs> uh, this one, this screen, that's the only one. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you see anything? Yep. I'm around. Uh, all right. So not here. Maybe here. Not not here. No. <laughs> uh, where was it? Okay, here. So, yesterday evening, um, I had a chat with people actually that implemented uh, Python in um, uh, for, for for other purposes, and they gave me a, a very reasonable use case. So they said, "Hey, how about we use methods from the worker, but we don't we don't need." the synchronous dance, we don't need the shared array buffer because the shared array buffer is great, but we already know that it gave a lot of people a lot of headaches around uh, what's the headers, what's the correct header, why it works somewhere, why it doesn't work somewhere else, why it works on iframe or actually doesn't, and all this kind of stuff. And the main issue was, uh, well, not the main issue, there were tons of issues behind this, but the main issue the blocker for everyone is that we were throwing an error out of the box right away uh, whenever the shared array buffer wasn't wasn't there so the resolution between yesterday evening and one hour and a half ago is that um basically there are requirements or people are asking for use cases where they want the worker to be able to provide somehow any utility and now also, sorry, I should have probably do that before. So they want a worker that just use the sync. And this is Polyscript because I didn't get the time today. I had so many things to do and I'm sorry, but it's not in PyScript yet, but in PyScript we are actually reflecting back the sync magic proxy. Um, they just want to have the worker story which is non-blocking, it can do a lot of computation, which is not the case here, it's just a lambda one, two, three. <laughs> so that's not very complex. But uh, at the same time, um, they want to be able to attach functionalities in the worker and be enabled from the main, in this case, to just invoke those functionality. From the main, the story is pretty simple because it's inevitably a sync because the, the worker can mimic or somehow fake blocking the main thread, it doesn't. That's the cool story about the worker and the shared data buffer is that the worker can ask stuff to the main without blocking. But the main can never block the main and that's by web, web specs. So there's no way the, the main can wait on a worker something. And so it's gonna be a sync anyway. And so that was for me like the aha moment. So it was like, uh, hey, but if it's going to be async anyway, do we really need to use the shared array buffer when the array buffer is not there? And so here's the thing. Um, there is now, that's, that's the long story short, 
There is now a flag which is called sync main only. It, it's a config flag. It's not experimental because it's not really an experiment. It's just what they, it's a requirement for our project to satisfy um, broader use cases. Uh, I should have probably put experimental, but there's nothing else I can do to make it less experimental. It's just doing something else. So in this case, sync main only if it's in the config and it's true, only in that case, it signals to script or PyScript or our, 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 our offer that the project is using features that do not require necessarily share that work. So in this case, the, the, the code changes is actually splitting is like, is this flag there? And actually it is, are people expecting sync both main and worker so that you can use sync from the worker or synchronous things from the worker and from the main that you also use. So if that's the case, um, we need, we got to check that the shared data buffer works. If that's not the case, we don't really need to do anything except we still need to check that the shared data buffer works because maybe you pass the fla this flag, by the end of the day, the shared data buffer works. And when that's the case, it's ideal in terms of code because there's less branching and everything else. But basically this has been patched. And right now there are a few things that cannot work if the sync is not there. So if, if the shared data buffer is not there, we cannot have the document cannot have all the document where you select all the kind of stuff you cannot have it but that's that's okay because on the code is not expecting to use stuff from the main in the worker so on the worker they're just expecting to set any utility python utility to expose from the worker and the main should be able to invoke one or more utilities and that's pretty much it so i can show you the demo but you can guess already what it does it just shows one two three in console once i run this um this is gonna be it works with micropython pyodite everything already because this has been fixed upstream into coincident so coincident um now basically only fills uh the shared array buffer in a way that um it fixes firefox that was done before already but here it tries as well if a shared data buffer can work at all. If, it, if that's not the case, it exports at the end all the utilities used internally. So it doesn't pollute the global prototype, global states, anything. But a window um, basically is just doing something else and is awaiting a promise and is doing basically behind the scene because it's a sync. It's doing the same thing that the shared array buffer was doing, except this time it's not a shared array buffer, it's just an array buffer. And that's going to be copied over whenever whenever it's resolved. So it's going to be like, OK, I've been notified, copy over the stuff, and that's it. And I can return OK, and I can resolve the promise, and that's it. So basically, we now have um, a story to tell, which is, can we have um, the, ma the magic worker non-blocking thing only exposed to the main without requiring shared array buffers and all the uh, odyssey of uh, headers? Um, the answer now is yes, but it's not in PyScript yet, but it's in PolyScript and I've asked to test this new feature and they will come back. And so by tomorrow, I should have any, any feedback. But this doesn't branch the code that we had before, so it didn't break anything. It's just an expectation. If the flag is not there, nothing happens differently. If the flag is there, they are allowed to expose utilities through the worker and call these utilities by a sync, a wait, and stuff like that from the main. And that's it. That's my demo. Awesome. Awesome work. Bravo, as always. Um, any questions for Andrea? No, just kudos. This is another thing that will unlock a lot of use cases. Yeah. That's Thank a, you. That's, yeah, that's the theme good. for the day, isn't it, Fabio? Is that there's a whole bunch of stuff where we go, oh, wouldn't it be good if it actually worked in this other way? And Andrea, before the end of the afternoon, the paint's not even dried, and it's kind of like there. Um, <laughs> well done, Andrea. Okay, Piet, please tell me, you switched it on and off again. Off and on yeah. again. Twice. Uh, and probably I will be able to do that. Let's okay. See. The floor is yours. Uh, okay. Now you should be able to see a screen. 
says P5.js. Yes, we do. Okay, so P5.js is, is a library to create coding in JavaScript, and I wanted to try how to use it. And there are a number of ways to use it, even with a basic PyScript, but I find out this very nice library, which is called Processo. And uh, it makes it easier. You probably already know about that. Um, what I did, uh, P5.js has also a uh, there are uh, there is uh, something which is called open processing, where you can mm -hmm. find uh, a generative artist which publishes their code. One of my favorite is uh, Okaz, is a, <laughs> a Japanese uh, uh, generative artist and creative coder who shares a lot of uh, very nice uh, stuff. Wow. And so I picked one of these and uh, I ported it to PyScript. And uh, this is the, the fun part. <laughs> so <laughs> this is this is PyScript uh, we're looking at now. This is PyScript. This is PyScript we're looking at now. And uh, how it is done, just to look at the code. Uh, so first, the original code, the, one of the nice things about uh, uh, open processing is that every, every sketch, so this is now um, JavaScript. Okay, by the way, I see that uh, it should look different, actually. So I have uh, some kind of bug in the port. Uh, but you have uh, the JavaScript code here. Okay, so what I did uh, uh, is uh, I took, uh, first I tried the processor and it works uh, fine. Uh, you have uh, rather standard uh, HTML. I updated uh, the PyScript to a recent one, and probably also the 5GS. I don't remember if I updated to a you have to add the processor, and this was suggestion. So the sketch.py is you in from processor import sketch, and you instantiate the sketch object, which gives you a P5 object, and then you call all the things that you are used to call in, uh, in P5.js, like the canvas, a rect mode, you just add P5 at uh, the beginning. So this is... Uh, exactly the equivalent of create canvas rect mode center. You just add P5 create canvas, P5 rect mode, P5 center. Uh, the rest, you remove some braces. Uh, you actually change tab to spaces because if you copy and paste from here, you get tabs and Python complains about that. <laughs> and uh, at the end, uh, you do the run sketch, uh, setup, setup, uh, draw, draw. This is... Uh, courtesy of the library that does the uh, probably create proxy behind the scene or something like that. And uh, so how this specific uh, uh, thing works uh, is that in the setup, uh, it creates a number of objects, uh, a number of circles uh, inside this grid. Uh, actually, if we go back here, so each one of these is uh, one object with the two circles. And uh, uh, and this is the setup that creates the object. And uh, in P5.js, you have two functions, setup and draw. Setup starts something, and draw is something that is done every time you, you iterate the animation. So it changes back the background to white, because you have to redraw the background, and it does an object run. And each one of these objects is something that has a number of properties, uh, an x and y, and then the x and y is one of the things that they are initialized on a grid. And uh, and then there are some timing stuff. Uh, there is uh, these uh, two colors, which are random from this list of colors. And when you run it, it does two things, show and move. So show the two circles that you have with the white circle in between, depending on the timing, and then move uh, because for, for preparing for the next animation, which is uh, pretty basic. Uh, in principle, you can do p5.js uh, in a very mm -hmm. simple way, just by calling uh, this function setup, uh, and uh, you do it like that. This is a very basic way of calling p5.js. Uh, but processor also has uh, all the type hints as the library, so I find it uh, uh, easier. So, um, so I think that's it. I think it's, it's fun to to try this and ah, the other thing I think I had to change, there are a couple of other things I had to change uh, for the code. Yeah, for the code, I had to make sure that uh, 
I took random choice when I selecting from colors. And uh, uh, the last one was uh, math, uh, important math, but uh, the rest was just pretty straightforward converting JavaScript to Python code uh, when converting that uh, existing piece of data. This is ah, great. The other thing, of course, I tried to run it with MicroPython, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, so just by changing the script type to Py from Py to MPy, at this moment, it's complaining about uh, some core stuff. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if you're able to see here, but this is the same script as before. Uh, and I don't know why, but uh, hmm. anyway, that's it. Uh, I can put to the link to this. This is public. Uh, this, uh, yes, please, please do. Um, processing is such a, a lot of fun for, you know, yeah. hacking away. And it's like, I don't know. It reminds me of, it's like the digital version of Jackson Pollock, you know, where he's kind of like mm -hmm. just splodging paint on things and playing mm -hmm. around. And it's a very playful sort of way of creating. And, um, yeah. and, we're, and we're splodging, instead of splodging paint, we're splodging code. Um, and and I, I, well, I love it, really. It's, it's such a lot of fun to do. And so were you, are you, are you the author of uh, Processor? No, 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 no. Nope. This is a I'm not the author of anything of like that. No, yeah. no, this is... This is uh, Okaz, who does a lot of art uh, almost every day, and he puts it out. Uh, yeah. So these are the pin stuff. Uh, no, no, no. This is, but it's uh, all on a uh, creative uh, coding license, uh, CC license. Yeah. So oh, wow. fair use. You, you find, uh, and there, there are a lot of uh, artists there. Uh, so you see the Creative Commons here, but I usually vote when I share this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but there are, there are a lot of them. One, ones that I did in the past was this one, but uh, this is not my script, which is a very nice one. Yeah. Balls going round. <laughs> Flowers. <laughs> any any questions for Pierre? No, I think I I, I think you've you've just kind of. Mic dropped there, and uh... <laughs> no, I was I was trying to say really just bravo, really yeah. really nice. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can post uh, links to it, yeah, it will be yeah, yeah. I will post the uh, the links that I showed. Yeah, definite round of applause there. Okay. I've got about 10 minutes before I have to skedaddle uh, to take my son to his trombone lesson, his famous trombone lesson. Um, so that leaves 10 minutes, Fabio, for you, matey. Floor is Lucky all yours. for you, I'm, I'm famous for being very short and yeah. concise in my... You're a very taciturn sort of a fella, aren't you? That's totally not true, <laughs> but I'll, I'll really try hard. Um, so the demo is uh just sharing some of the work i've been doing the last couple of days um last call community call i think not the last the previous last one i showed a, a random idea that i had over the weekend to map uh custom basically html uh objects to python objects inside the PyWeb library that we have in standard uh, standard lib to experiment with it, uh, also extend that with possibly other JavaScript libraries. Uh, I picked just two lays. And the idea here is to one experiment. So there's zero around it that is to to be merged right now. I think some something will be merged in the next weeks or days to support creating UIs with PyScript. But this is more like of a building block and should be natural. Uh, feel natural. Uh, the second thing is, uh, this work also was, has been really, really, really useful to highlight what is nice about PyDOM and PyWeb and what really sucks. So, uh, what I'm going to demo here, extremely experimental, there's a PR, a draft PR open that I'll put the link. You can follow the work there. Uh, keep in mind, this is really, really, really uh, not ready. Uh, so any feedback, super welcome, but also keep that in mind. So, um, let me show you real quick. Ta -ta -ta. Uh, greens. I just want to add you, you, you wrote look elsewhere. 
<laughs> not for you in the PR, and, uh, and uh, that's why I didn't look at it at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I should put. I, I thought it would. It would be too long to put. Like, look carefully, but it's not ready, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yes, you're right. I'll change the title. Um, so the PR is this one, uh, number 1960. I'll I'll show it again later, uh, and I'll drop the link on chat. Um, but the idea is to generate code with constructs that are uh, generate UIs uh, with things that are just just feel natural to uh, the web development. So all this UI it's fully created with this um, package by web.ui. It has the concept of elements, which are native elements, and it has concept of extensions or whatever it is. I don't want to put the def uh, defined names here, but I added a custom markdown one and a shoe uh, map to shoelace components as well. Uh, if I click here, this whole UI is uh, dynamically generated, uh, and it's just basically going through a list of the ones that I just had time to put in the in the, in the demo. Uh, so far, I've been mapping. Uh, actually, this morning, I started to go and look at the MSDN definitions uh, and started to add the most common ones. The good thing, actually, is I think I found a way to add it, um, add JavaScript properties dynamically through the scripters uh, in a way that then they also show well in editors. So if you're doing stuff, the auto completion and things like this is nice and saves a ton of space. So those files are going to be uh, less heavy and reduce the, the um, size of PyDOM inside our standard library. That's one of the reasons I also want, didn't want to add everything because we don't want to inflate uh, the size of PyScript um, core.js. So here, all of these are dynamically generated. They are uh, interactive. In fact, this one, if I click, I, I get the alert. This is the whole code for, it, for this. Uh, again, look at this carefully with you know grain of salt. It's not a definitive, um, but the idea is that I wanted to create as much as possible in a Pythonic way without too much code and border plate. Um, for the user, elements should feel natural. So you can just call a button, pass, this is the label. Um, but if you add anything else, actually there's a typo here. Um, this should, um, the text is, it has a typo, but um, if you pass anything like the style is, is a Python dictionary, uh, classes should be a Python object and things like this. So all of that should feel natural inside of Python. I also added a markdown thing. Uh, in this case, it's just an example where I can write, uh, I don't know. Oh. Um, say something like, It's it's super blurry for me. I don't know if it's yeah, just it's, it's it yeah. Don't worry, that's um, Discord. Okay, okay. Uh, I need to check my configurations, but uh, hopefully you get the sense of it. Yeah. Um, so actually, if I make it bigger, does it? That's oh. perfect. No, no, no. Perfect. That's perfect. fine. That's fine. It's just perfect. a focus. I think that's something weird, and uh, but that's awesome. okay. So you can you can write stuff and it converts. Um, whatever. Uh, but then also I added shoelace components, which the nice thing is this shoelace is just a CDN that you can load. Uh, it loads just with the CDN. So it's very convenient and everything is just a custom element. So it ties really well. So here is an alert. All the whole code for this is just, you know, alert. Here's a, an icon. Uh, uh, there are also more complex objects like cards. This is the whole co code for the card. This is the um, basically the contents of the card, the image that I want to put in the card and in the footer. Uh, um, I'm still ha finding, trying to find balance between what feels Pythonic and what feels weird, honestly. Uh, but one thing I like is that, that it's quite concise, you know, uh, in terms of what you can do to uh, create new, new uh, UIs. Uh, a lot of it was inspired by also uh, Chris Laffer's work on LTK, which is another UI framework to create UIs uh, with PyScript. His approach was to basically remap a UI framework on top of jQuery UI. Um, so he has dependencies and it's inspired by the, L, um, the TK uh, framework. Um, 
I wanted to, I like the idea of having apps and showcase what, how it feels to code those things in the apps. So 40 minutes ago or one hour ago, I just started to do a gallery as well. So this is super rushed. I tried to copy um, Chris's code to feel like, how, how does it feel to create the same thing with this new framework? Um, by the way, Chris's work right now is way more stable, is way more performant, is, is, it's great. You should be looking at that. Um, but anyway, uh, this is a good benchmark. Um, so I created uh, this example gallery. Uh, I, the first demo that I have is just the same thing. Uh, but I also replicated a tic-tac-toe. Um, it's incomplete, actually. Uh, I still didn't figure out the whole style yet, but it's kind of working. So if you click here, you got a, a OX, etc., and it should feel natural. Um, now, cool, show me the code. Uh, let me show you the code for this. So I'll start with the gallery. Uh, there's a ton of boilerplate code. So here's just like the boilerplate to create the main page. Um, actually, this this whole first part is markdown. So it's just translating a markdown. I define some style here. Um, I have a way, actually, another thing. Let me show you the the page to the HTML for the gallery. Really doesn't have anything other than just this. And if you notice, uh, Markdown, for some reason, it's, it's not working dynamically. But if you notice, I'm not importing shoelace or anything else. Uh, it's actually uh, loading dynamically. Um, and the whole code is created, uh, the UI is created by this gallery here um, that I just showed. This uh, function here creates uh, a demo and adds it to the left pane. So basically, it just creates a new div, uh, adds an event to it, and then uh, returns the div. This creates the main area. This this is the one that I did for, to create the, the markdown uh, components page. Um, and this is actually this whole code here um, until here is to create the, um, this tic tac uh, app. Um, so let's start with this function, uh, which just creates the div that uh, we're going to return. This is uh, the CSS. Uh, the same one that uh, Chris had here. Um, then I'm gonna, I just create the main div. Yeah. I'm going to have to drop in a minute, Fabio. So um, the recording will stop very soon, but clearly the meeting will continue and I'll have to drop out of the meeting. Um, okay, I'm wrapping up. So uh, okay. hopefully... Um, um, so real quick, I just, it's just a for loop. I just create a grid for every row. Uh, I add a div for each square, add the class that it needs. And uh, add a, a function to handle the click, and and that's it. This is the main app. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm running. Uh, sorry for this, um, but the actually the handler itself also uh, quite uh, short and concise. So overall, I'm happy. But this is, was a great learning lesson to uh, actually improve Python, improve PyWeb, and other things like this. That's it. That's for the, that's it for the moment. So for sorry for running. Um, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We need to, you know, we all, all of us were taking the time and things like that. Cool. Any questions for Fabio? Okay. Another mic drop there, Fabio. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. Boom, 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 boom. Where is it? Stop.